Well, looky who we have here. I knew it was you. I knew you'd need help. This is one of the trickiest subjects in Science 10 thus far. Naming of ionic compounds. You need two things. Number one, courage. Number two, your periodic table of elements, the one I gave you. If you're not in my class, um, just get one. Let's practice naming some ionic compounds. And I think we should do that right about now. Hi. Hey, hater. What's your name? This is the name of the game. This is a complicated thing. When naming ionic compounds, remember an ionic compound is something with a metal and a non-metal. That's at least our science 10 understanding right now, okay? So I have four different examples. This FeO, MgCl2, iron 3 oxide, and potassium sulfide. These are three, or there's, these are four different compounds, and uh, they're all ionic. Metal and a non-metal, metal and a non-metal, and so on and so forth. And But there's two different ways of doing this. When given the chemical formula, we need to write down the written out full version. Or, when given out the written out full version, what is the chemical formula? So let's start with this guy right here. MgCl2. First step, after concluding that, yes, indeed, this is an ionic compound... The first step is to check to see if it is multivalent. Multivalent, remember, means that this first, the metal, does the metal, the one that's going to be a, be a cation, a positive charge, does this element have two different possible ionic charges? You take a look at this, find Mg on your periodic table. You will find this is magnesium and magnesium only has one charge and that is a uh, a two plus charge this Cl is a is chlorine and you'll find that it has a one negative charge okay so magnesium not a multivalent which means we don't need to do this stock system we need to write down a magnesium. We don't need the brackets to tell us what charge we have, but the next thing we do is chlorine is the next element, is the non-gas element, and we take down the the I-N-E ending and replace it with Ide. Chloride. And that's it. Magnesium chloride is the name of this ionic compound. So let's do this one. Um, this Fe, find it on your periodic table. You will find out that this is iron. Now, does the metal, remember the first step, is the metal a multivalent? In this case, yes. Iron is multivalent. So we're going to write down iron iron and we're gonna write down our brackets remember these brackets here they tell us what charge we have to use if there's two different possible or three different possible charges and in this case we don't know yet so I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I do but let's do this what's this this O is oxygen so following the same rules oxide Okay, so we have iron something oxide. So this is what I do. Um, this oxygen, the non-gas, the, uh, the non-metal ones, they are going to be, they are not going to be multivalent. So look on the periodic table. Oxygen is a 2 minus charge, 2 negative charge. Um, iron can either be 2 plus or 3 plus. Okay. So we know that this 2 is going to go in front of our iron. And which number do we need to put in front of this oxygen 
and then simplify it so it looks like we only have one iron and one oxygen. It's the two. We put a two down there, simplify it, right? So it's, it doesn't look like this, Fe2O2. We can reduce this by its greatest or least common multiple. Okay, in this case it's two. We divide these by two, cancel these out here, right? So we have iron. We know that iron, the charge that we have to do is a Roman numeral two. Iron two oxide looks like that, all right? So let's go in the reverse now. This is where it gets a little bit difficult. Iron three oxide is our other compound. How does it look? Okay, this is what I do step by step. Because this written out formula has the stock, has some Roman numerals, we know that the metal is multivalent. Remember this. Please remember. I'm begging you. You can't see it, but I'm actually on bended knee. Okay? I am begging you. Please do not. Do not say that because there's a three, that there are three irons. What I mean by that, don't just go F E. 3O. A lot of people try and a lot of people try and do that. That's wrong. This 3 tells us the charge. So this is what I do. I'm going to write an iron. And then I'm going to do a 3 plus cuz that's the charge. And then I'm going to do an oxygen and its ionic charge is 2 minus. And then I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to cross them down like that. Real simple like. So what is the chemical formula for iron 3 oxide? Fe2O3. Okay, this is different from iron 2 oxide. Can you see that? So be very, very careful. Alright, so let's try this one. It says potassium sulfide. Potassium, because you don't, this and this is the easiest one. Because you don't see any brackets with Roman numerals, it means that it is not, I repeat, not uh, multivalent. The metal, potassium, is not multivalent. So what am I going to do? I'm going to write the symbol down, K, and potassium, look on your periodic table, always go back. Potassium in its ionic form has a one plus charge, and sulfur, or sulfide, I'm going to write the S down here, this actually has a two negative charge. All right, so then I'm going to take these numbers and do the switch, slap, slippy, switchity, slap it a roo. And what is the chemical formula for potassium? Potassium sulfide. Easy. Easy, son. K two S. Now some of you are crying right now, weeping about how easy that was. And some of you are crying out of confusion. So get yourself a Kleenex and wipe your tears away for a second, okay? You're asking me, hey, wait a second. Shouldn't I put that one there? Wrong. Don't put the one there. We automatically... I gotta use this crappy eraser now. Yeah, that's right. I'm taking away that one. If there is no number, if there's no number here, sub... what is that? Subscript number we automatically assume that there's one of them. Not that there are zero. We can't just put a zero down there because zero sulfurs, well, we wouldn't even need a sulfur. No, don't do that. K to S. Probably can't even see that. K to S. I'm going to just write it again. K to S. Potassium sulfide. Okay? So... If I were to summarize, step one, is the metal multivalent? Like here, like here. This is not multivalent. This is not multivalent. Okay? If it is multivalent, that's the only time, I repeat, only time you need to use the stock system. And Mr. Stock would love for you to use the Roman numerals. For he is, for he is very happy that you are using the Roman numerals in his name. Mr. Stock is very happy. Okay? That's how you name ionic compounds. Is it multivalent? If not, easy. If so, got to use this number. Okay?
I say unto you, happy hunting and happy naming your children.